comes here a reminder of my table fellowship with you. So may not this be an essential part of life because it is a reality of the kingdom of God. Table fellowship. That's prayer. It's Jesus again saying like he did to his early disciples. Come and eat. Come and eat. Enjoy the blessings. Enjoy the blessings of his name in your life. I'm a harem. We sat down at a harem table. I carry his name. Tremendous blessing. His provision. He's the one that has supplied all of this. And I can come to him if there, if there is a need in my life. He said, I will provide all that you need. I, I will take care of you. His vision for my life. He's going to talk to me about what, what's going on in the world and my part in it. And that's a beautiful place for him to talk to me. His teaching is going to teach me during that time. His inheritance. All that is mine is yours. <laughs> you can enjoy the blessings. And he who has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. All that is mine is yours. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. They have no right to do that. Take a hold of it because you're part of his family and you get to sit around his table. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the inheritance. And then presence, just above everything, that wonderful presence of God. But it's a presence I know and he knows me. So he hasn't walked in, or I haven't walked into this as a stranger. I walk into this as one who knows me. Oh, the wonder of it all. The wonder of it all. And so, with God's great heart, he says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord cause His countenance to rise up on you and give you peace. That's what you get around this table. And I hope as we move through this together, that God's Spirit will come in a precious, sweet, wonderful way to each of our hearts. And we'll know, oh, that was for me. I, I'm not here to, in any way, grind any thing in to, to offend or to you know, make you feel bad about your prayer life. No, I want to help you in your prayer life. And I hope you'll help me in mine. But if I do step on anybody's toes, it's like Dr. Taylor told some of us young ministers one time. He said, I didn't come here to offend anybody. But he said, if I happen to step on anybody's toes, I'll do my best to grind it in. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Sarah, if you'll come and just put the icing on, I don't know how, what the cake tastes like to you, but I hope the icing is good for you. So the acoustics in this room are supposed to be good enough that you just talk. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. I really wasn't much of a person of prayer in my early years. I was more of a doer. You know, I, I read my Bible, but then I'd want to just get up and start doing what I need to do. That changed, thankfully, 30 years ago. We were given a tape um, that was broadcast over a radio, but we were given a tape that was uh, a story given by Darlene Diver Rose. She wrote this book, and the tape was also called that, Evidence Not Seen. I'm sure you can't see this. But if you have not read her book, she just recently passed away, but you need to read this, Evidence Not Seen by Darlene Diver Rose. As I listened to her story, it was a story of 
young love. She was very, very young in her early, early 20s. Married to a man who had lost his first wife. He was a missionary in, in New Guinea. And she married him and went with him to New Guinea as missionaries. It's a story of God working in her life. It's a story of her giving herself to the Papua New Guineans, to loving them. And as they settled in, they soon became embroiled in the whole mess of World War II. And the Japanese overran those islands and took them prisoner. They separated her husband um, and from her, and she found out much later that three months after that, he had died in a prison camp. She was young. Here she was, very, very young, in her early 20s, already a widow. It's a story of incredible hardship, mistreatment, starvation, physical abuse, illness, dysentery, it's just horrible. And all of that accompanied with paralyzing fear. Just fear of what was going to happen, what was happening. Incredible story that you need to read. I can't give you in so many of the details. But she ended this story. It was just a beautiful story of how she came to so trust in God and look to him and how he answered her and how she would pray and talk with him. And he would just bring miraculous answers to prayer. And she ended with this little poem. I heard him call, come follow. My goal grew dim. My soul went after him. Who would not follow if they heard him call? And I said, oh God, I want that kind of relationship. I don't have that, but that's what I want. I want to know you like she knew you. I want to be able to <coughs> pray and to see you give me answers and give me direction and give me help. Now, I'm not the smartest person in the room, and I just thought, well, now God knows I really mean that. He'll just wave a magic wand, and I'm going to be like that. I'm just going to have that kind of relation. I'm going to be like that. Well, what followed were some of the hardest, most difficult, dark days of my life as I learned what it meant to trust in Him. As I learned what it meant to really say, I don't feel anything, but I'm just going to believe you, God. As I, as I was the recipient of His wonderful uh, scripture that He would give to me, He would just give me just what I needed. One particular scripture was uh, the whole of Psalm 32, but especially verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. What wonderful, comforting words that I still go to all the time. I'll say, God, I don't know what to do in this situation, but you promise me that you will counsel me and you'll instruct me and you'll teach me. Now I need to know. And he is so faithful to answer that way. Those were days that prepared me for what <coughs> only God knew lay ahead. And he's been so faithful in all of those days. And another scripture that he gave to me that I have used so many times, and God has quickened it to my heart over and over again, is from Isaiah chapter 4. 41 verse 13. I, for I am the Lord, that's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that Jimmy, I understand you preached about last night, but I wasn't there. But I got it secondhand. For I am the Lord your God, who takes you, this is beautiful, who takes you by the right hand, by your right hand, and says to you, Fear not, I will help you. That has become such a such a pillar for me in my life because he's done that. He's been so faithful to do that. He says to you the same, do not fear, I will help you. 
the wonder of God's invitation to pray to Him, to, to come to Him and seek Him, and the promise of His listening ear. Isn't that wonderful? He hears us. He actually hears us, and He pays attention. The wonder of His presence in His life. Father, we thank you for the wonder that you, God Almighty, <clears throat> creator of this universe, of heaven and earth, would condescend to let us talk to you. We don't have to say it perfectly. We don't have to use the right words. We just have to pour our hearts to you. And we're thankful that we can do that. Lead us through this week. Help this to be a, a precious time of learning the wonder of prayer. I pray in Jesus' name.